viruses they invent, they're not like, okay, you're exposed to asbestos and people have a pretty good idea if you find out you're exposed to asbestos under the, um, the MSDS. MSDS. MSDS, yeah, the MSDS, you see, okay, it's asbestos or it's uh, uh, some, some solvent, you have an idea what the possible effects would be. Well, apparently, with these viruses, they're very particular. Each one is different. There's hundreds of them created every day. And if you don't know, you don't know. So finally she files an OSHA complaint to find out, loses her job right away. Wow. So wow. in order in order to um, get her job back, she finally, um, she, she, she talks to the OSHA people. The woman said, well, I think there's a violation, um, uh, a violation of, of, of the OSHA regs in the fact that you lost your job for making a complaint. But she said, you know, uh, Becky, maybe, maybe it's a waste of time for you to protest this because there's only a success, maybe one case in 200 is there a successful resolution. We don't have the, you know, we don't have the, uh, the people to deal with this. And, uh, you know, later on she tried to find out what happened. They, they lost their file. <laughs> and the, the OSHA lost the file. In any case, um, uh, she started getting this uh, reaction. The boss is saying, we don't see any future uh, uh, for you here. Uh, why, why are you doing this? And, and so, uh, after, so here she is. She, she was fired, so she, she takes him to federal court. And uh, with, without a union, and on April 1st, 2010, she won a $1.37 million judgment in, in of her, um, free speech rights. Yeah, free, free speech rights on the job. And uh, so, of course, the company appealed it. And uh, I, could, I should read you the, uh, what happened. They had a hearing on, uh, in October in New York City on the, uh, the, the Second Circuit Court made up of get this, um, well, Dennis Jacobs, I don't know who that is, John M. Walker, who's former President Bush's cousin, <laughs> and uh, Sandra Day O'Connor, who's a, a retired uh, Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. And she kicked their ass. What happened was, what happened, his, his uh, say, on uh, due consideration, the, uh, the, the uh, appeal, the three appeals judges decided um, that uh, uh, Pfizer's challenge uh, was, was, was uh, really didn't hold any water. They said, um, again, the claim pr presented sufficient evidence to support the jury's finding that Pfizer acted willfully, maliciously, or with reckless indifference. Pfizer presents no compelling reason why we should disturb the jury's verdict. And uh, they find no merit in Pfizer's remaining arguments. And so she, she uh, ends up, and apparently they, well, Pfizer paid the money to her lawyer. Now she's trying to extract that from her lawyer <laughs> without, without having to go to court. But she figures she's going to have a, you know, a half a million or 600000 to put in her pocket. But what's happened now is, this is, just shows you how, how, how vicious and how, uh, how long the reach uh, is of these companies. Uh, her husband is a, uh, a PhD pharmacist with, uh, uh, with the uh, public health service. He's a uniformed officer. And he was, he was, he was uh, working at the FDA doing inspections of factories in Asia and Latin America, doing all kinds of very high level work. And uh, because of his wife's case, he starts getting under pressure. And so what's happening is, I mean, she doesn't have any source of income through her own work anymore because she's been fired. And her husband, you know, makes a, a very decent salary, you know, over 100000 So they, they, they're getting by. They're doing well. They're doing fine and, uh, in terms of money. So what apparently happened is, I mean, we can only surmise, is that uh, Pfizer was able to re has been able to reach into the the FDA and get them to pressure her husband, who's, who's a wonderful person, and he uh, when I when I went to visit them in in, uh, in Deepwater, Connecticut, he shot a deer, and we had this wonderful stew. He's a good cook too. But uh, in any case, uh, no, he's not a hypocrite when it comes to me. 
but uh, in any case, uh, so he, he was forced to uh, forced out of the FDA and had to return to an earlier job uh, with the, uh, with the um, Indian Health Service in Albuquerque. He has, he's working and it looks like everything's going to be work out pretty well, but this is what happens. These, these, are, these are gigantic companies and they can reach right into the supposed regulators. And I know my little mini experience, I, I worked for a number of years, at, uh, seven and a half years with the, the California Public Utilities Commission, and um, I, you know, we, we've had experiences where we, we find out that, uh, that, 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 for example, PG&E, someone showed me a memo that uh, a, a PG&E functionary had written to the, the, the head of my unit, uh, which is the, what's called the division, at the time it was called Division of Ratepayer Advocates. I don't know whom they advocated for, and they said, and there was there was a, a question of uh, who should they, 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 the person in PG made very clear in this written memo or uh, email, don't let Berman work on, it, <laughs> on, on public power issues in the Yolo County Davis area because you know we were involved in our own time, of course, uh, trying to uh, expel uh, replace Pacific Gas and Electric electrical service and 70,000 meters in, in Yolo County, Davis, Westsack, Woodland, and, and so forth. And uh, so, in any case, I think she, she was very grateful. Uh, about a dozen people showed up, many from, from out of town, to the, uh, to her uh, 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 second, to the, the, the three-judge hearing at the uh, Second Circuit, New York City, and really, the the, 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 the uh, lesson here is the importance of solidarity. I mean, she had f uh, help from all kinds of people, and uh, she got she made contact with uh, uh, a senator from Connecticut through uh, an old friend of mine who was with uh, <coughs> who I know through the Occupational Health Projects in Chicago and Connecticut. And uh, you know, I managed to do little things here, hook her up with Nate with Nader, and because she she's. She's absolutely brilliant. Now, the, 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 the talk she gave uh, on um, April 28, 2009, if anybody wants a copy of it, I can send it to you. And Steve, you can tell how to, how to it write is, it up on the board, how to get it. It's online. It's online, but I don't think that the... the, 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 the I, I transcribed the thing, and I can send it to anyone. Okay. Uh, but my, my email is danmberman at gmail.com. Dan M. Amazon married Berman, B E R M A N, like a couple of Congress people and uh, comedians at gmail.com. So if you want to copy of this, it's called The Nightmare at Pfizer Injured Biotech Worker, Molecular Biologist Becky McLean. And it's very inspiring. And I think one, one thing that, that she, you know, when I started talking with her after I met her through, through Steve and, and the Labor Video Project was, like a lot of people, she, you know, had her life. She's kind of settled along. They had a pretty house in, in, uh, outside of New London, and uh, and uh, you know they're making pretty good money. And they thought, well, you know how people say, well, I'm an American. You can't be happy with me. <laughs> well, guess what? Sometimes it happens, and it's a great education. And her husband had had. Sometimes I think he, uh, you know, well, now they take they won this thing. Maybe get a better car. But he's realizing we're talking, and he now he has a lawsuit. I think it's against the FDA, <laughs> and he realized that you're in it, my friend. Yeah. It's okay. It's beautiful, and uh, they may win. But pe people, you know, it's just it's yeah. wonderful to see the the transformation people can make. And I encourage you, you know, if you get a chance. Mm -hmm. Now, Becky, her health is getting a little better. She has episodes where she she really is is not not too healthy. It doesn't have doesn't have the get up and go she had before before she she, she got sick. But she she's doing okay, and uh, she's uh, she and and Mark uh, McLean are really an inspiration. So I you know I, I really I want to thank the, the Labor Video Project and Stephen Cosme for 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 inviting me to this thing, and it just. It was, it was a, one, a wonderful presentation. One thing you have to remember in this state, here's what I think. I think biotech is the new, uh, in terms of hazards, it's the new uh, uh, 
GMO. It's, it's the new GMO, you could say, in terms of manufacturing hazards and so forth, it's really the new electronics industry, you know, wow. and, and wow. nobody wants to talk about it. And you, you know, you go to organizations that deal with occupational health in the Bay Area, even pro-labor organizations, you never hear anything about it for several reasons. One, there's no unions in this, it, 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 union, there are very few unions that deal with, with uh, researchers, number one. Uh, number two, People see biotech as the great new jobs engine, just like they were saying, that's what they were saying about electronics. Well, where the hell the electronics job, production job? Don't exist. They had a whole bunch of ladies from, a lot of ladies from the Philippines, from, I don't know, Southeast Asia, from Latin America, working down in San Jose, uh, you know, years ago, maybe 20 years ago, all, most of those jobs have disappeared. I mean, you talk to people who've been trying to organize those people into the unions, just like they organize, they organize people, you know, the, 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 just like, you know, the model is, all oh, the auto workers were organized in the late 30s and the 40s. The steel workers, those were the big, strong industry. No mass. It's not happening. The jobs get, get exploited, and it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things. So, um, <laughs> I, I think we've, it, it, the state spent, what, $3 billion dollars on the uh, biotech. And uh, anyway, so, that's anyway, all. thank you. Uh, <laughs> let's close the three. Oh, can we, so we're not able to, to really... Uh,